Good evening all and welcome. Before we jump into the haunted house stories, a quick little announcement. Over on my Patreon, I am posting every other day this week and next some exclusive stories. So if that interests you, feel free to check it out. Oh, and that 24 hour video I tried to make. Well, because YouTube won't let me upload it, I've uploaded the full version, whole 24 hours as an MP3 that you can download onto Patreon. So if that's something you'd like, feel free to join at the $10 tier and you can get your hands on it. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Back in the early 90s, we used to live in Dundry, a small village in the UK. On the opposite side of our house is an old church that was built in the 15th century. They used to bury criminals outside the cemetery where the house we rented was built in the 18th century. It was quite a big L-shaped house with two wings and two floors, and the house was originally a butcher's house. For some reason, whenever it rained, there was a musky sulfur type smell. Our parents went on a holiday, so my atheist uncle came to babysit me and my sister, who were three and four years old at the time. After my uncle had finished putting us back to bed, he went to relax in our guest room, which was next to the bottom of the staircase that leads to the upper wing where me and my sister shared a room. All was quiet for a few hours, and in the early hours of the morning my uncle was up. He starts hearing faint creaking sounds coming from the upstairs hallway, and thought nothing of it. After a while he hears those creaking sounds again, but this time a bit louder, and went upstairs to investigate, as he thought me and my sister had gotten up to use the bathroom. He checks our rooms and sees that we're both asleep in our beds, and goes back down to the guest room. It was silent for a while, and he starts hearing that creaking sound again from the hallway upstairs, and gets up to go have a look for the second time. As he's climbing the stairs, he realizes that the creaking sound turns into footsteps. Those footsteps coming from the left hallway take a right turn, and start coming down the stairs towards him. My uncle leans against the railing and the footsteps walk past him and continue down the end of the hallway into our living room, where the fireplace was, and the butcher shop, as the second wing was added later. He starts freaking out and turns on all the lights downstairs. He waits for a while, the sounds stopped, and he did not hear them again. When he told my parents they had the local pastor come to our house and give it a blessing, and apparently those footsteps weren't heard from again. Our uncle and my parents only told this later on when we were older. I think it's really interesting, since I'm very skeptical of the paranormal, and so is my uncle. I had moved to London from my hometown, and had at that point experienced a couple of paranormal experiences. I had moved into my first house share independent of my uncle, who had put me up when I first moved over to London. The apartment block was modern, red brick, and a nice place in a leafy part of North London. The first weird thing that happened was my South African person I shared the apartment with asked me one evening why I was walking so slowly to the bathroom at night, that my footsteps were so slow, and he wanted to know in a jokey way if I was sleepwalking. I knew for a fact I didn't go to the bathroom, I just joked and brushed it off. Funny thing was, I heard weird slow footsteps on the floorboards at different times, but thought nothing much of it. Several weeks after this, another strange thing happened. I used to have this little lamp. It was like those metal tubes with lights on the top of it. It was small, but it was a nice little bedside reading lamp, more decorative than functional. The thing is, to turn it off you had to press the switch on the electrical cord, and I remember waking up one morning when I categorically remember switching it off before I fell asleep. I have an excellent memory, and was neither drinking nor eating before. But the craziest thing to come was a few months earlier. I had returned late on a Sunday evening from a weekend in Europe with my friends. I got home, turned on the TV, and sat on the floor and rested with my back against the sofa. I then decided to open a can of beer and look at the TV. But what happened next was insane. But it happened. 
When I was watching TV, a pillow from the sofa came over my head and landed directly on the tin of beer in between my legs and spilled all over the carpet. I literally ran to the front door and started hyperventilating, it was that scary. I used to live alone which made it so much worse. I needed the TV on. Every light in the house was on, and I was in a constant state of paranoia after that. Things calmed down and occasionally, I would get these feelings like I wasn't alone. An atmosphere, unpleasant and hard to describe. One night I came back from the city centre after my birthday. It was late. I went to go to bed and of course the house was fully lit up. Just as I was starting to get into the sleepy zone, I heard this knock knock. It was the indisputable sound of a knuckle hitting a hollow door. It was one knock. I could have questioned myself but there was intelligence there and it was like it was done right beside my room. It sounds like it's next door. I froze and I mean froze and said, that's enough. I can't take it anymore. I started looking for a new house to share and was gone within two weeks. After all my experiences accumulating up, I started to realize I might be sensitive to the paranormal. I subsequently found out the building was originally built for the mentally ill and was sold off to developers in the 70s. Go figure. I'm a 37 year old female. The house where I grew up is over 100 years old and my parents still live there. My dad has actually lived in that house his entire life and my grandparents built out the attic space into two additional bedrooms when he was a kid. The back bedroom of the upstairs was the room my sister and I shared when we were kids and is directly above our living room. There have been so many times when I would be alone in the house and in the living room where there would be a crashing sound coming up in our room. I'd run upstairs but nothing was ever out of place. I didn't say anything for years because I figured no one would believe me. When I eventually told my mum and sister, they looked kind of shocked but both admitted they'd been hearing the same noise for years. When I was 16, I was playing Super Mario World in the alcove of my bedroom. I was facing the window with my back to the rest of the room. When you start a level in the game, the screen kind of fades to black for maybe a second or two. When this happened, I could see the reflection of a man standing behind me. Thinking it was my dad, I whipped around to ask how he managed to sneak up the stairs, as they creak like crazy. But there was no one there. I reset the console over and over, but the man was gone. I told my dad what he saw, and he seemed a little spooked before he told me that I had just described his father, who died before I was born. After that, he refused to acknowledge that we had ever had that conversation and believed that I was just seeing things. The last big occurrence happened when I was 17. This was before the house had central air, so the summers were spent when the windows opened to circulate and I had the front door open but there was no breeze that day. I was playing on a computer when the front door swung shut and latched. Now, a hundred year old door has to be latched in a very specific way, and I froze when I heard footsteps going from the front door past me and into the kitchen. As the footsteps went past me, I heard the sound of a woman humming. To this day, I get freaked out when I'm alone in that house, even though I know there probably isn't anything malicious there. I worked for a state forest service in the tri-state area several years ago in a field location that was a 250 plus year old farmhouse. The basement was dug and compacted earth. There were large fireplaces in several rooms, a few still even had pot hooks for them to heat water or cooking. There was one bathroom that had been installed in the 1940s, prior to that there had been none. The floorboards were wide slats of pine and you could see the hand forged nails holding them in place. In some areas they were far enough apart that you could shine a flashlight down through the crack to see the basement floor. Mice and camel crickets were common, they were just a fact of life and we lived with it, as was the ancient oil furnace that we had in the basement that broke frequently. Another odd fact was that down in the dug earth basement, in the farthest and darkest corner, there was a dark room for developing film. I had never ventured in there, as it never really bothered me. 
I'm now going to share the stories in a loose order, as it had been 14 years now since I worked there. I always felt watched there. It was a constant feeling that remained until I got in my car to leave at night. There were often strange smells, sometimes like rose water and oranges that had warm associations, but sometimes like rotten garbage, even when no trash was present. There was a kitchen that had been slightly modernized on at least two occasions, all the cabinet doors would be shut in the morning, and then, as I was upstairs working in my office, I would hear them all open, come back downstairs, and find them wide open. The moment you walk in the door in the morning, it was as if you felt all eyes turn on you. Our one secretary dealt with this by very loudly announcing, good morning, to the existing inhabitants, as she was often the first one in, and said that she didn't necessarily feel threatened, but if she started hearing too many noises while she was alone, she would say out loud, y'all know I don't want to be hearing this. I don't mess with you, so don't mess with me. And she said it on some occasions and it would stop, but not always. The first time I remember seeing something physical was when we had meetings going on downstairs and I ventured upstairs to fetch a chapstick out of my bag. My back was to the main hallway and all of a sudden I heard a set of footsteps rush past me. I turned and saw two shadowy people, one shorter than the other one, flash down the hallway and into a back office making footsteps the whole way. On another occasion, concerning footsteps, our secretary and I were in the office on a winter morning. Just the two of us, and the heater was broken again. We sat in the same room downstairs trying to stay warm with a space heater. We couldn't use the fireplaces. They were shut, and full of who knows what after decades of non-use. We were laughing and talking when all of a sudden we hear very loud boots clomping up the steps. We look at each other and paused. At this point, we were used to these kind of shenanigans and felt that it was best to not let it bother us. We lost two cleaning people in the evening after a few of us had gone home, as we never had more than six in the office, and that was a busy day. We had a cleaning service come to do the vacuuming and try and help out with the pest issue by assuring the trash was taken out, etc. Each night, the cleaning man was to fill out a journal that was left on my boss's cabinet to tell us what he did. After he'd been there a while, he told us in the journal that he heard his name being called while he was vacuuming. This happened multiple times and he would turn the vacuum off and it was silent. Finally. He said he knocked on the wall and at first nothing happened. Then he knocked, shave a haircut, and there was a response of two knocks. He quit. My boss had a bad habit of working later in the house after dusk and I would sometimes work with her, but we would never stay past 6.30 or so. It just wasn't a good idea. It was as though it was that house's time, and we didn't want to intrude on it like a mutual respect. I know it sounds strange. Before she started putting a cap on her evening hours, one night she was working alone at her desk facing out into the hallway when she saw a very tall shadow person pass by the doorframe, slowly, not running like the ones I saw. She said it had to be at least seven feet tall, it scared her so badly. And on another occasion she was working late, and a giant blue orb about the size of a soccer ball, with electrical looking energy, came off it and went down the same hallway, past her door, and crashed into a metal filing cabinet we had at the end of the hallway. On another occasion, she was working on a project in our large meeting room, which had likely been a dining room at some point, and was engrossed in what she was doing, oblivious to her surroundings, when she looked up and locked eyes with a dark-haired man who appeared to be in his mid-forties in 19th century dress with grey eyes. She said he looked as surprised as she was that she could see him, and saw daylight pass straight through him. He turned to go towards the main stairwell and disappeared. She yelled out, understandably startled, and the secretary and I came running to see what was wrong. None of us saw him again, though we did give him a name based on what we knew of the house's history. In retrospect, I'm not sure the name was correct, but we tried to be respectful. In that same room, I was simply passing through one afternoon, when I mentally heard a woman's voice say, with great agitation, This is my house. 
A tired old trope, I know. But there is validity to it when considered in the context that when a canal was being dug in the 1830s near the property, the state was purchasing tracts of land from residents in order to make room for the canal. Later, in the 1960s, the state began purchasing large tracts of land in order to preserve them as state parks, one lot being where this house is located. I began leaving, a recorder running overnight in different areas of the house, and there were two rooms where I recorded the most. One was in the oldest section of the house, what was once a family room, and the other were the servants' bedrooms upstairs, one of which was my office. I should note that this house is located in a very rural area. There's a canal nearby that's now used only for recreational kayaking and fishing, and a series of hiking and horse trails too, but no city sounds or noise interfere from neighbours. When I left the recorder downstairs in the family room, on multiple occasions I would play the recorder back the next day and capture beautiful piano music. It sounded faint, but clearly audible. Classical music. We also experienced the scent of fresh pine in this room for no apparent reason, over and over again. The other, far less happy sounds, were of a gruff man's voice, and the sound of at least two children crying. I could never make out what the man was saying, and would be taking a guess as to what the children were saying. But it always sounded like, I want my mummy. This is the most troubling memory I have of that house. No one likes to think children suffered. I began going to the local hall of records for the township and doing some research which was a great experience that I highly recommend on the deeds and wills associated with the various individuals who had owned the house throughout the generations. Most were handwritten and spoke of chain as a length of measure and stone markers of rocks around where the land boundaries were. I found out the names through the most recent family to live in the house in 1967, who by then was renting it from the state. One particular family had been on the property for nearly a hundred years, and I had a chance to find a living relative. I did, and I contacted her via email to ask if she would like to visit the house, and she did. She was in her late 80s, but was a cousin of the family who was still living in the house in the 1930s, and visited frequently as a child. Her mind was clear, and I asked her if the family room is where they would set up a Christmas tree and point to it. She said it was. She knew that I had been doing some research on the house, and I asked her if her uncle, who lived with the family but was unmarried and died in 1950, played the piano. And she said he did, and that he played beautifully. She was young in the 1930s, and I didn't want to trouble or scare her with the details of what had been going on in the house. I just treated it like a nostalgic event for her. This obviously doesn't explain all the other myriad events in the house, including the apparitions in clothing from different time periods, but it explained two small pieces of the puzzle. We continued to have experiences there, as well as our contractors such as two young men we hired to repair flashing on the roof. And they continually blamed each other for tools vanishing and reappearing in strange unrelated places. We had to do our own cleaning because we couldn't retain a cleaning person, and on another occasion, we had a visitor use the bathroom where there was a slatted door closed facing the toilets. As she did her business, the closet door began to shake violently, and the doorknob rattled violently as though something were trying to escape from the inside. She was horribly scared that she jumped off the toilet, pulled her pants up without using any toilet paper, and fled. It was often mischievous behavior. A few years later, we lost funding, and I had to move on to a different job but I still see the house when I'm doing extensive bike rides in the area. The house, as a field location, also lost its funding and has been vacant for some years now. Perhaps the spirits are happy that no one is there. Me and my best friend hung out with another girl when we were younger. She was Kayla and the other girl Summer. Summer's house was one of the original houses built in the city around 1830. We loved going into her mum's room, because she had this huge bed, and the ceilings were super high and lined with vintage suitcases. We're like ten, and finished watching a movie on there and started jumping on the bed like little hooligans. 
After a minute or so, we realized there were four of us on the bed. We immediately stopped and a shadow flew out the door. Didn't really go back in there until we were in the ninth grade. The three of us came back to Summer's house late one night after a concert. I don't know why she said this. She had a ton of mirrors all set up at certain angles so that no matter where you were in the room, you could see everything all around you. She said it was because her house was haunted. We were laying in bed watching TV, when in the mirror the light in her closet turns on. The door starts to open and there's a large black shadow of a man standing there. But when we turn around, there's nothing in the closet. In the mirror, it's still there. A month or so later, Summer and I were skipping school with another friend who we'd never hung out with outside of school before. As we turned into Summer's walkway, this friend goes, Is that your brother in the window? We look up at her bedroom window and saw that same dark shadow standing there. Sure enough, we went in and no one was home. Summer was obviously fed up and freaked out. She asked her mum about it, who turned as white as a sheet. She told Summer that when she was young, she would see the shadows all over her room. Her mum, Summer's grandmother, cleansed the room with holy water and prayed for them to go away, and she never saw them again. But recently, she started doubting her faith, and they were slowly creeping back into her life. We ended up drifting apart after high school, and the last I heard, she moved away. But it always left me wondering. This house was built somewhere in the middle of 1800s and has belonged to my family ever since. My great-great-grandparents built it from scratch when they moved from Italy to Uruguay. The backyard occupied an entire block, so it was pretty damn big. The house served as many things. A cinema, two churches, a bar, a clandestine abortion center, and many other stories. Sadly, a lot of people had died here. Some murdered, some natural deaths, other people decided to take their own life. The previous owners, some family friends, said that the last nights they spent there were almost unbearable. Doors and windows would open and close alone so fast they had to get out as quickly as they could. And the neighbors always told us that they could hear babies crying in the backyard where they would bury the fetuses. Cousins of my mother had seen people in the bathroom mirror plenty of times. Smells would appear out of nowhere. It was a pretty messed up place. We moved in 2010, and almost immediately things started to happen. Stuff would be missing from where we left it. We could hear conversations in different languages in the backyard at night, but after searching there was no one there. But the thing that creeped the hell out of us were the apparitions. A few months after moving in, my mother woke up in the middle of the night, only to find out there was a man at the end of her bed with a black plastic bag covering his head. She didn't scream nor wake me, just closed her eyes and prayed until she fell asleep. Now this became a regular thing. We could see different people at any time in the house, and they would vanish into thin air. I remember once when I went to a sleepover at my cousin's house that was about the same as ours but divided by a wall. And when I woke up, I saw a woman watching me from behind a full body mirror. It was midnight. I couldn't move. So I closed my eyes and decided she wasn't there anymore. When I opened them again, she had moved to the bedroom door. And when I closed my eyes and opened them once more, she had gone. We once discovered a picture in my cousin's house that appeared to be a baby from another time, judging by its clothes and after contacting a medium, she told us that six different presences were living in the house with us. I could tell you 30 extra things that happened there since, but I just don't like living with the knowledge that they aren't going anywhere, and it was their first home. To them, we feel like intruders. I had a little experience before meeting my husband, but since being with him, I've had too many to count. We had to move to a new house and the first night there is what started everything. My husband is a walking magnet for the paranormal and had a crazy dream about the house. In the dream he said we were in bed watching TV and when he looked down the hallway he saw a lady standing at the end of it. At the same moment she started screaming and running at us at full speed. 
a face print burned into the wall, and as soon as she reached him, he woke up physically screaming. After that night, things started to get weird. We'd hear people whispering, see shadows out of the corner of our eyes. We'd even get the ickiest feeling walking anywhere in the house. It got to the point where we all camped in the living room, and before it got dark, I'd grab everything I'd need for the night, and everyone refused to go into the room until morning, because for whatever reason, nothing would happen in that room. We'd sit and watch shadows peek around the corner throughout the night, and hear the whispers until we fell asleep. A few weeks into living there, my husband was taking the dog out and left the door open, and when he turned around to come in, he saw what he could only describe as the top hat man standing in the doorway and turning to walk through the house. It scared him so badly that he ran inside and smoked the whole house out with the entire bundle of sage I had. Things only escalated from there, and I'd get this feeling of doom that sat so heavy on my chest that I had to go sit outside for it to go away. We eventually found out that an older man had passed away in the apartment below ours at some point. A few months into living there, the new tenant downstairs ended up having an electrical fire, which ultimately made everyone have to vacate. It's been a few years since we've lived there, and we still discuss it from time to time. I never had a paranormal experience. In fact, all I knew about ghosts or anything paranormal was what a typical 16-year-old would know from the movies. My family or friends had never discussed anything of the sort, and as such, anything paranormal was truly the last thing on my mind. It was 1999, I was 16 years old, and worked at a global fast food chain at weekends while I was at school. It was a Sunday and I woke up, and as usual, the first thing I would do is turn on the radio. Remember, this is back in the 90s. To get to your preferred station, you had to adjust the dial to tune into the FM frequency of your desired radio station, while well, mine was always on FM Midland Radio 103. So I get up, turn on the radio, get dressed and go downstairs getting ready for my 11am shift. I knew from the night before my mother, father and then 11 year old sister were going out of town for the day. So when I went downstairs for breakfast to an empty house, all was good, and I went to work. I worked a full shift and came home at around 6pm, expecting to find my family, but the house was still empty. I ran upstairs, desperate to change out of my greasy clothes and take a shower. As soon as I went to my room, I began my usual habit. Flick on the radio, and as soon as I turned the switch on, Instead of Midland 103, I got hard static. I thought to myself it was a bit odd, and just moved it back, and assumed that my sister Chloe had done it. She was generally very mischievous. I thought nothing more of it. About a half hour later, the door opened, and I heard Chloe talking downstairs to someone on her phone. I wasn't really in the mood to go down, and that's when I heard the door open again and my parents arrive. Odd, I thought. When I went down, I looked around and asked where Chloe was. My parents told me that they had dropped her off at a friend's house before coming home. I look at them in disbelief and tell them that that's impossible. I heard her arrive around five minutes before they did. They stare at me perplexed, unsure what to say. I begin to insist, telling them that I wasn't lying, and that's when my blood ran cold. The looks on their faces confirmed that they were telling the truth. I'm not sure what I heard. I wish my story would end there, but it's just the beginning. After this and the following weeks, I started noticing shadows in my bedroom that weren't cast from anything, just there. These really fast and brief shadows in the corner of my eye. I would only ever leave two to three inches of my curtain open, so there was tiny scope for anything to be reflecting from outside casting shadows on my wall. There really was nothing outside though which could possibly create any. It was a dark back garden with trees, and I was on the first floor. To rationalize, I talked myself out of what was happening with the shadows, but it kept persisting night after night. 
On top of this, when I used to reach the midpoint, that's what I call the moment between being awake and falling asleep, I used to get this vibrating feeling, like a shake, as if I was being prevented from falling asleep. This went on for weeks, and I can't tell you the amount of sleepless nights I had. So this kept building and building up my anxiety, coupled with me doubting my sanity. It was getting unhealthy. I tried confiding in my mother, who thought I was either lying or high, but it got worse. One night when there was no television or shadows, I turned to my left side and there she was. It appeared to be like a faint green hologram. I could see the outline of a woman's body with long hands and fingers. I could see through the apparition. It was hollow and transparent green. I was so scared I couldn't lift my head and looked above her hands. I put the pillow over my head and said at least 30 Our Fathers without stopping and convinced myself it wasn't real. The incredible thing was after that night it was like the atmosphere changed. I never saw or felt anything else and the room felt so much better after that. We moved into the house in 96 and the house was built in the 50s by a Mrs Slater who raised a family long before we moved in. I had always been uncomfortable telling anyone about what happened, but one night, several years after my experience, me and my mother were having a nice chat and I brought up how I resented the fact she never listened to me about what I went through in that room. She apologised, but she was really empathetic about it which caught me off guard. When I asked her why she was so understanding, she admitted that one night in my room, an ashtray came flying off the shelf and smashed into a wall. And then, when she got up a plastic cover from a radiator, the thermostat flew off on its own accord towards her. She also said in the weeks before this happened, she could swear she heard something whispering her name at nights. She admitted she was so terrified she was thinking to herself, just kill me and get it over with. That was five years ago, that conversation, and we had a very similar one last summer. I brought everything up and we spoke about it, and I asked if anything else has happened since then, and she nodded. That a few months prior, that her electric shower started on by itself. Now this is quite hard to do, as in order to start it you need to flick a power switch, and then turn on the shower, which is a different switch. It was so loud she ran to her neighbours next door, and also mentioned that one night she heard an almighty thud in the attic like someone slammed a very big suitcase just above her head. The only way into the attic though, is a very small hatch. I have no doubt there are spirits or entities attached to the house, and they are capable of physical interaction. The odd time I stayed there, the lights were always on in my room. I spent a lot of time at my mother's father's house in the woods of Michigan. My brother and I got lost a lot, but if we could find the train tracks we could always get back. One time when I was around 8 and my brother 12, he didn't want me bothering him and ran away leaving me alone in the woods. I was crying and wandering around when I came to a house with two horses in a pasture and I went and knocked on the door for help. This lady who looked like an older librarian answered and looked really shocked. I whined about my brother leaving me, and she told me to stay at the door while she went back in for something, and came out to walk me home. I was telling her about the train tracks, and she said she knew where they were. We get to the tracks, and I'm cheering and pointing in the direction of my grandpa's house. But when I turn back, she was gone. Not a trace of her. I went ahead and crossed the tracks and followed the path to my house. My brother was already back and they were all outside about to go looking for me. Grandma had made dinner and we all went in to eat. I told grandma that I wanted to bake cookies for the lady that helped me. She thought that it was one of the neighbours until I said she had two pretty horses. Apparently none of the neighbours had horses and when I said her house was on the opposite side of the tracks she said that that was all thick woods, and there was only houses on this side of the tracks. I was adamant about where I saw the lady in her house, 
So the next day, Grandma packed a bunch of sandwiches up for a picnic in the woods to see where I saw the lady and her house. It was a long walk, but we made it to the pasture. Except, there was no house and no horses. The only thing in the pasture was my hat that I lost while wandering around before I found the lady's house. We still had our picnic. Not sure what I saw that day. Maybe it was a ghost. I am a single mother of my one and only son. We've been living in our house a long time and it's starting to take a toll on us. My son is 15 and has always been very sensitive to the paranormal, just like I have been my entire life. He's a very sweet and good natured boy, but is shy and doesn't like to associate too much with people, but has always been attached to me. I had a very good friend named Dally. We were childhood besties, but she tragically passed when we were 19. I gave birth to my son when I was 21, so we never even met her. So he hadn't ever meant anything to her, but we always discussed that if we had children, we would be there for each other's kids and have them grow up together. My son would tell me when he was only four years old that he would see a lady standing in the corner by the television who would signal for him to come over. It would confuse me as I didn't see anyone to where he'd be pointing. I asked him what he meant and he would say, Mama, the lady with brown hair and blue eyes is waving at me. Who is she? When he described her to me, I was in complete shock, as I knew he couldn't have been making it up. He was describing my best friend. I was in complete shock as I knew he couldn't have been making it up. He was describing my best friend. He had never even seen her before. I pretty much put off telling him about Ali, who would have been his godmother, until he turned at least 10. Yet here he was describing her to me when he hadn't even seen a picture of her. I guess that was her way of keeping her end of the promise. She was coming to check on us, but specifically my son. My son doesn't remember, but he has always mentioned he'd seen a similar girl in his dreams that looks exactly like Ali. My son has also started seeing an old woman in the house. From what he told me, he stated that when he got home, he was heading up to his room. He looked back to the downstairs level and when he did, he saw an old woman walk by and briefly look at him before she vanished in a split second. My house that I have been living in was built in the 1880s. My great grandfather bought this house from an old man right after World War II. Sometimes at 2am, I'll feel the presence of this old man near my bedside and it really freaks me out but when I look there'll be no one there. My son also mentioned that at 3am he will start to hear footsteps from time to time. When my mother comes to visit, she always says she senses the apparition of a young girl around age 6. I've seen this girl myself, but I haven't told anyone about it. This girl was wearing pigtails and had blonde hair. I've seen her a few times, I even saw her from the window once when I got home from work. She was in the window of the attic. It was pretty freaky, but I sense this girl has a good side to her and is meant to be an angel, but I could be wrong. Well, one evening when I was getting out of the shower and getting ready to put my clothes back on, I suddenly felt someone hit my back. I turned around not knowing who was there, but I didn't see anyone. When I turned back around to look in the mirror, I saw a young girl, maybe around age 10. She was wearing a long white dress and was barefoot. She was gone in the blink of an eye, but I know what I saw. The next day, I end up finding a handprint on my back. It was two in the morning and I would hear loud bangs from our kitchen with cabinets being slammed and plates being moved around. My son is very scared of his room and claims to have seen the old woman in there looking at him from the closet. The same one I previously mentioned. It's gotten so bad he now comes and sleeps in my bed. He's petrified of his room and I don't blame him. I get the same vibe. It's getting to the point where we can't take it anymore and I just don't know what to do. I'm planning on looking at new houses for rent and we might move in with my parents. Anything would be better for my son and I. We'll go anywhere and leave everything behind. I just want him to be okay. As this house has taken 
such a big toll on both of us. I don't personally believe in ghosts, but the other night I was in my room, and my dog started randomly barking downstairs, which he normally doesn't do. I went to the top of the stairs to check on him, and he was looking at me with his toy and wagging his tail, as if he wanted to play. He's normally very well behaved, so this was very weird behavior for him at 11pm at night. Anyway, only 20 to 30 minutes after that for the rest of the night, I was hearing constant noises, bumps, scratches, things moving, and at one point I heard very clearly a door creak open, but I couldn't figure out which door it was. It really sounded like someone was rummaging around upstairs. In the morning I checked and nothing was missing or moved. Last night I was hearing some noises again, but nothing too crazy so I ignored it. But tonight, I was hearing some noises and ignored it. But I just went to the bathroom and I can very clearly hear someone sitting down on my office chair as it makes a loud creak when you sit on it or move around, it's unmistakable. And it was coming right from my room. I was honestly too scared to leave the bathroom. But maybe it's just nothing? I don't know. I have that sinister feeling that my house might be haunted. In 2013, I was in my hometown while my parents shifted to this new place. I'm 17 years old now, and before starting let me tell you that I have been seeing these things, and I don't know why, since childhood. Maybe I had a certain connection, but I don't know. The place I live is famous for murders and stuff in the old times. The colony I live in is built up just on the side of a cemetery, and by killing the owner of the land, so it has a dark history. Certainly, everything was totally fine until one day when I came back from a movie at around 2am, and I saw a dark shadow hanging from a wire. I couldn't believe it. I did a double take, and it was still hanging there, almost like it was staring at me. I ignored it for a while, thinking it must be something else. I then saw that same figure many times at that certain time of night on my roof. I got scared, but I was used to it, so I didn't mind, neither did I tell my mum. I used to go upstairs at night talking to friends or something a lot. I was all alone, I didn't even know if this thing existed there, maybe even looking at me, until one day I heard those noises some footsteps running on the roof, because above my room is our rooftop, and I heard someone running around 1-2am to 2 AM at night constantly for hours, which isn't even humanly possible. I ignored it, and then my mum noticed it too. Someone was running and banging on the floor constantly. The next day, she asked our maid what was happening, and she said that we're not the only ones experiencing this. Anyone who's lived on the top floor has experienced it to this date, and that there's a spirit who runs every night for hours. People didn't believe it, but a family member left this home because of it. I got chills knowing that, and to this date, even last night, I heard and hear footsteps running very heavily and fast around the roof or banging something on the floor. It was all bearable until I got a knock on the window at midnight. It's never hurt me or anyone though, so so far so good I guess. So we moved into a new home rental. We had just moved most of our stuff into the house, but had not yet unpacked, and most of our stuff was still in the main room on the ground floor. My mother wanted to check out the park nearby, and took my brother and two sisters with her while I decided to stay home and help my dad unpack. We had a cat that had given birth to six kittens, and also a dog. While we were unpacking, the dog had hidden under the couch, which was a bit strange, but we thought that perhaps he was just scared of being in a new place. But then the kittens started hissing and puffing up at their fur, at presumably nothing. And then we heard a weird noise coming from upstairs, which happened to be the direction the kittens were facing when they started hissing. My dad immediately thought perhaps there was a squatter or intruder. He grabbed a baseball bat and told me to stay put. He comes back down shortly after, and is white as a sheet. He told me to come home with him, and in one of the rooms upstairs he showed me an old wooden chair, which was not unusual. 
But what was is the chair had a perfect circle worn into the wood, as if the chair had spun on one leg and worn into the wood. There was fresh sawdust still in the groove. My father said that when he went into that room, the chair was moving on its own and stopped the moment he opened the door. A lot of other weird stuff happened after that. A few times pictures flew off the wall. We would hear people talking in the hallway at night in hushed voices or random bangings in the wall. We moved out only after a year because it was all just too creepy. I don't believe my house is haunted, but I just happened to experience a few unusual events that have me scratching my head. Let me see what you think. To preface this, I have four kids, and it's not unusual to hear one of them wake up at night and call me. It's one of the reasons I never get a solid night's sleep, that and the fact that I'm a very light sleeper. Well, on this particular night last week, I woke up hearing my daughter call, Mom. Confused, I went into my half-asleep autopilot mode and got out of bed. Everyone was asleep. Then I realized why I felt confused. I had heard two voices call for me at roughly the same time from different parts of the house. One was just, Mom, and the other, Mom. There was a noticeable difference between the two, at least for me. So like any good mother, I rolled out of bed and made my way towards her room to investigate what was wrong. The fact that I heard a sound from a different part of the house was sort of throwing me, and halfway to her room did I stop in my tracks and realize that it was impossible, as she was not in the house at all. But she was at her grandmother's house, and she rarely calls for me anymore because she's eight and a big girl now. I told myself I must have dreamt it. In the morning, I was loading my kids up to drive my boyfriend to work. I have this weird feeling of Sasquatches coming to grab my kids from the car, so I make sure to always close the door. I live in a populated area with small pockets of forest surrounded by city and vast national forests, so in my opinion it could happen. Anyway, me and my boyfriend came back out with the other two kids. One of them was already in the car. That's when my five-year-old son tells me that he heard someone laughing in the yard when I had gone inside. Uh, I was freaked out. There was no one around, and I worked on leaving as quickly as possible. It was just before twilight, and our porch light doesn't make it around the corner of the house where the car is. That was strange. That, and the middle stake in our chicken wire fence, was flipped over. It hadn't been like that the night before. My bedroom window is directly in front of my car and that fence, so I usually know its state. But who would knock the fence over when the driveway was open and accessible? I figured it was an exceptionally big squirrel that did it on a trip for a midnight snack at the bird feeder. On the drive, I asked my son about the laugh he heard. He said he heard it outside of his head, and that it came from the climb and slide toy, and it sounded like a boy was laughing with a sore throat. On the way home, my son fell asleep, and I heard him made a noise in his sleep. The ambient noise was loud, so I couldn't tell if he giggled or whimpered. I called his name and asked if he was dreaming about laughing, and he said yes, and that it was funny. I was relieved at this. My son is pretty sensitive, and would be scared if his dream was something creepy. When we got home, it was the beginning of dawn, and I sat in the car until there was sufficient light. I let my dog out first, as I usually let him case the neighborhood, in case black bears come into the yard dumpster. Uncharacteristically though, he began running all around the yard with his nose to the ground. He went to areas he usually doesn't scout, and I told myself that he sensed my unease, and he wanted to be a thorough good boy. Nothing has happened before or since, but these seemingly unconnected events have definitely left a weird taste in my mouth, and I wonder what you guys think.
This story happened three years ago, when I was 15 in my village. My village is located in a rural area that is protected by the government because it's been considered a natural paradise for the last 30 years. This means that exploration in the area is quite difficult nowadays since it's forbidden to cut trees, which means that it is a huge forest. I was spending my summer there and my favorite thing to do was to go hiking. Although I had never gone alone into the woods, just roads with people, my grandma told me that the forestry service had come and opened an old path that had been covered in bushes and trees for the last 30 years because of a race that was being prepared. Usually I'd go to the nearest town about an hour away by foot and the only way I knew was by the road. But on the way back, I decided to try the new path out. The first part of the path was the easiest. There were many obstacles and landslides, but it was nothing compared to the rest. The second part was a hill full of rocks that was the hardest thing to climb. I had to literally go up on all fours like an animal. When I reached the top, I looked around and found some animal bones and didn't pay too much attention since the area is known for its big population of wolves and bears. I continued the way faster than before. This part was plain, so it was a relief until I got to a dead end. Some huge tree had fallen exactly on a row on the path, and it was going to be very challenging to cross. This seemed really strange to me because there were no other fallen trees. Aside from those trees, there was a little barn in the middle of the woods. I thought to myself that it was probably abandoned, so I decided to throw my bag into the little field that belonged to the barn, and then I crossed the fence. I crossed it running without realizing the most bizarre thing. The field had no trees. It was clear. No bushes, no big plants, nothing. It really shouldn't be like that if it was abandoned. I started feeling a bit concerned about how the location and the fallen tree was so coincidental and how there casually was a barn beside with a clear field when the path had been closed for 30 years. It just seemed a bit off. I went on and luckily I was reaching the last hill that my grandma had described, the one that connected with the village, when suddenly the woods went silent which allowed me to hear some branches crackling from behind me. I thought to myself it must be a bird, but it came closer. Then it sounded like footsteps. After trying to convince myself it was surely just an animal, I started walking faster. And the footsteps did too. I started running, and after noticing that, so did the footsteps. I was running for my life at this point, and suddenly I started hearing incredibly loud grunts. Everything was going really fast. Luckily, I got to my village in a minute or so after that. I got into the patio of the first house I found and closed the door. It was a relative's house, and I stayed there for ten minutes until I got my breath back and just went home. I just get chills from remembering that place, not having signal in the middle of nowhere and the grunts. It makes me think there was someone following me, from the barn. I never went into the woods alone after that. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. A huge thanks as always to my members and patrons whose names you can see on screen. If you would like to get that 24 hour recording, sign up to my Patreon link in the description as well as new bonus content every other day for the next two weeks as a special bonus for April. That's it from me. Stay awesome. See you in the next one.